What's going on all you Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at the Star Wars The Old Republic Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started. And welcome back, everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market on July 7th and then a few weeks later in the book market. So speaking of book market and direct market, what we're looking at here is the direct market cover. To your left, that is your standard edition cover. And the direct market cover, as always, is only available at your local comic book store, places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, Dying Breed Collectors, Organic Price Books, In Stock Trades, Tales of Wonder. The standard edition cover is available everywhere. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and those places that I just mentioned. Now, man, do I love this cover, though. I'm a big fan of this particular cover. Just because this is the cover to the handbook, and it just features all the characters that are in this particular storyline. So you have the main character of Zane Carrick, you have Griff down there, you have Camper, Jarael, uh, you have Roland, and then you even have the, well, never mind. You can find out for yourself who all these people are. Here is what the spine looks like. So the spine looks like they used a yellowish tint to the main cover to put down here on the spine. It's the same color they use for the font here of Star Wars, the Old Republic, and the back of the book. So this is a pretty big omnibus. Collects a lot of issues. Let's look at it under the dust jacket. So the dust jacket shows an image. Actually, these are two separate images. This is from the mini series, and this is from the ongoing series up here. So let's go ahead and get this open, talk about it, where it fits in in the chronological reading order, and look at a lot of this artwork that's in here. All right, let's go ahead and crack this open. We have some black bookend pages here. Star Wars The Old Republic Legends, Volume 1. Interesting, Volume 1. So, Legends, what does that mean? Well, before we talk a little bit about it, here is all of the credits, including this phenomenal thing up here. John, not thing, but he's a gentleman. Uh, John Jackson Miller, who wrote this entire omnibus. That is insane, because we're going to go over the content here in a minute. Uh, but you can see all the wonderful artists that join him on this. A lot of these people are probably familiar to you, because some of them blew up. Here's all the inkers, all the colorists. And, of course, your table of contents, where you can find each of these stories. Love the little recap here of what's happened before um, in the past and where this takes place. So, first, let's talk about the Legends. So, Legends pretty much is the stuff that was printed before the Disney slash Marvel era. So, it's the stuff pretty much primarily printed by Dark Horse. And it's the same way that they re uh reprinted them in the epic format the marvel epic format they put the legends line so it's stuff that's non-canon now this stuff did come out so whether it's canon or not i think it's up to you because all of these stories here take place a thousand years before luke skywalker blew up the death star so what, what is this about what, what what are we looking at here who are these characters so interesting enough I had never read any of this. I, this is my first time reading any of this Star Wars uh, Knights of the Old Republic, as it was originally called. It's just called the Old Republic for this omnibus release and the Epic Collection release. And when I'm not familiar with material, when I do overviews, what I like to do is I like to you know, get a little bit familiar with them. So I know what I, just a little bit of what I'm talking about instead of look at the pictures. Oh, this is pretty. Look at the colors. I wanted to get familiar with the character. Sometimes what happens, though, is I enjoy a story so much, like the case of Aliens, the omnibus, when it came out, I read them cover to cover. And that's what happened here. Uh, for the last two weeks, from time to time, and in between other books that I'm reading, I was reading this. Because the first issue, not issue zero, not this one back here, so this introduces us to the characters really quick, but the main issue, issue number one, ends on one of the coolest cliffhangers, I think, for any Star Wars um, that I've read or have seen. And I've read some of the novels. I haven't read all the novels. And I have read some of the Dark Horse era books, mainly the most popular ones like Dark Empire. But this is an era I wasn't familiar with. And I think the main reason I stayed away from this era was because all of this Knights of the Old Republic 
was centered around the video game. And both of my brothers are big fans of KOTOR 1 and 2. I don't know which one they like more than the other, but I think when it comes to video games and adaptations of video games or just world building of video games that happen in comic book format or in movie format or in anime format or manga format, whatever it is, they're just not that good from my past experience. And I think that's part of the reason why I never read any of this stuff. So when it was coming out in epic format, I was like, eh, yeah, not for me. That's based on the video game. Damn, I was wrong. Because this is so good. I haven't played the video game, so I'll throw that out there. And I was hooked. Okay. So, I, I hate to mention what the hook is, but it is in the back of the book. And I, I, I have to talk about why I enjoyed it so much. And it's the cliffhanger to the first issue. So, just in case you don't want any spoilers, I'm going to put a timestamp here. Uh, and I'll put it in the description of the video when I'm going to talk just a little bit about a spoiler. I don't think it's much of one, but I know how people are sometimes. They want to go into something blind, and I completely respect that. So just in case, spoilers. But I do want to talk about the ending of the first issue and what the hook is. All right. So let's set it up. So we have this character of Zane Carrick, this Jedi Padawan. And, you know, he's learning with a bunch of Padawans. His master is Lucian right here. And Lucian is, you know, a master Jedi. So him and his other Jedi friends all have their own Padawans. They're all about to graduate. And it was a big event. So <laughs> Zane is not your typical Jedi Knight. He's clumsy. Now, he has an interesting relationship with the Force, but I'm not going to spoil that. What I will say is that he, for his coronation or for his ceremony, he comes in late. So when he's supposed to meet the rest of the Jedi Masters and the rest of his Padawans, he arrives late. And what he sees and finds is a complete massacre of all his friends. So all the Jedi Masters that were training the Padawans killed the Padawans. And he is like, what the heck? So of course, they're going after him. And he's running away. That's where the first issue ends. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. All right, let's see where this goes. So of course he's on the run, and then not only that, but he's also framed for the murder of, of the Padawans. So that's really cool to see him escape, and then afterwards, you know, well, let's go to the non-spoilery parts. All right, the non-spoilery parts. So Zane is escaping from his past life for some reason, unless you watch the spoiler section. But throughout his escapes, he is joined in his adventures uh, by Camper. And, of course, uh, what is his name? Mam Hierogriff, who goes by Griff. Uh, this badass character named Jarael. And then later on, Rohan, LB, and characters like that. And they're all flying from his past life. There's Camper right there. And there's Jarael. And it is an awesome story. So if you didn't watch the spoiler section, I will say that there's something that happens that had me hooked and I wanted to find out what happened and then what the ramifications were of this event. So it feels less like a Star Wars book or story and more like a whodunit detective storyline because there's a dark secret going on uh, behind the scenes. And when you, f you figure it all out, you're thrown into this adventure that, like I said, happened a thousand years before Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader show up. So, and on top of that, you get a huge Mandalorian war that comes in the middle of it and all these characters, our main protagonists, these characters here, get stuck in this big battle. So, what does this contain? Let's talk about that, because we haven't talked about that. Uh, so, this collects Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, 1 through 50. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic War, which is a five-issue miniseries. So, it's a, this is 55 issues so far. Throw in the handbook, and then you throw in materials from Knights of the Old Republic uh, slash Rebellion, number zero, where we're introduced to the characters. And you've got yourself one of the biggest Omnis that Marvel has put out as far as Star Wars. This book has 1,344 pages. Retails for $125. And I am showcasing some of the artwork. Oh, I love that character. You can find out who that is later. But let me just show you one of the things I immediately noticed about this particular omnibus were the covers that were provided, some of them, by one of my favorite artists, and that is Travis Cherist. Love his artwork. He 
Of course, started off like a Jim Lee clone in the 90s and then developed his own amazing style. He's done a lot of stuff for European comics. Um, now, inside the book, you are going to find the artwork of Brian Ching, uh, Travel Foreman, Dustin Weaver, Harvey Tolibau. Oh, and for the most part... Uh, Actually, you know what? No, Dustin Weaver does keep coming back to the title, and so does Brian Ching. I love that. You know, for 50 issues, you have all these rotating artists. I love that Brian Ching's art looks like this, where it looks like it's uninked, and some of it looks like it's just in pencils, and the colors are thrown on top of the uninked pages. I love art style like that. I think it's awesome. And as I'm sitting here, okay, as I'm hit, sitting here flipping and you looking at this amazing artwork, look at this freaking spread page of the Mandalorians. Uh, one of the questions I'm going to go ahead and answer is that this does not collect the fourth volume of the Old Republic Empire, or I'm sorry, uh, Old Republic <laughs> Epic Collections. So this is not collected in here. This happens after this. I actually did an overview of this on a Tuesday, and this is actually closer to the video games than the stories found in this omnibus. And then you see early artwork here from Harvey Tolabao and Dustin Weaver, who eventually went on to do a bunch of Marvel projects. And then you see one of my favorite things to see for when any connect collection is the evolution of an artist. So this is artist here, bon, uh, Bong Dazo, who did a few fill-in issues towards the very beginning, but it wasn't until the later parts of the stories that I started really liking and digging his artwork. It was really complicated. Like, I think it was too cartoony for me at the beginning, and then we get things like this, and this is more of my style. And there's nothing wrong with cartoony artwork, but to me, it has to fit the tone of the story, and for some reason, it just kind of threw me off, because you had him also in between Brian Ching and uh, Dustin Weaver. So his cartoony style towards the beginning kind of threw me off a little bit, but this stuff back here... It's just really good. Kind of reminds me, honestly, of uh, Steve Scross, who's an amazing... Look at that. That's that's awesome. I dig it. Also, it you know it could depend on, on the inker as well. But you're going to see a lot of creatures. There are some really nice Easter eggs, some nice surprises as to who shows up. And then you ask yourself, but, 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 but how? That doesn't make any sense. It's really cool. I liked it. I know it's not a review of the book. And sometimes people ask me to review the books, and I may go back and review this if I have time, but this is more of an overview, just showcasing the artwork and talking a little bit about the story. But it's also in my top 10 must-buys for the month of July, if you've not read this. If you have the Epic Collections, you already know. If you have the uh, the floppy Dark Horse books, or the Omnibus editions that they released a few years ago, you already know how great the story is. And the ties to the Mandalorians is so awesome. And the fact that it took place a thousand years ago, or I'm sorry, a thousand, a thousand years before a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But it, I don't know, it, it still could be canon. I would love to see an animated series. Now, here's the thing about this that I'm sure some of you know. With, without spoiling too much in the comments section, do any of the characters that appear here appear later on in the video games that's because i've never played the video games and now i'm kind of curious to play them even though they're what 2005 2006 is when they came out so yeah let me know if any of the characters that made it here because i like i really like the character of zane he's an awesome jedi he's he's a lot different than many protagonists that i've seen in star wars if they show up in the kotor video games let me know please in the comments below let's look at the artwork really quick in the miniseries so this is what the war miniseries looks like and like i said since i haven't played the video game this feels like it's closer to the video game more than the rest of the series because it does feature some of the characters throughout the series but they're thrown into this well <laughs> war and the art style is different even the tone of the storytelling is a little bit different but miller's writing um he's impressive like the fact that he was able to write this story set it into a star wars universe but made it completely character driven and you know made you care about all these characters i never i mean this isn't the skywalker family this is to me feels like a proper prequel to the movies to episodes four five and six i know it's not lucas and i know it's his vision but this is the stuff that I wanted to see. This is the kind of stuff I wanted to see in those prequels. Just badass knights, Jedi knights fighting and, you know, the, the forming of the, the, the Empire and Rebellion. Now, there is a little crossover here 
which I think crosses over into the Empire Omnibus that's coming out. It's only, a, like, I think it's six parts. And parts five and six are in the Empire Omnibus when it comes out in 2022. Or in the Epic Collections, if you have them. They're not collected in here. They do give you a little recap. Uh, I, I wish the two parts had been collected in here, but I get it. We're already looking at over 56 issues collected in one Omnibus format. But, um, <laughs> because there's a certain character, there's something that happens to a certain character, and the next thing you're like, oh, and then you're like, wait, how? So, I wish they had done a recap page, a proper recap page as to what happened. Now, in the very back, and I'm glad they kept this to the very back, is the actual handbook. So, the handbook here, this guy's such an, I didn't even talk about Karath. Um, he's an awesome character. So, here we have the beginning of the handbook, a little synopsis as to what the story is, the character of Zane Carrick and all the characters that appear throughout these pages and gives you a quick recap as to who they are. One of my favorite things about all of this is that all of these characters for the most part are running away from something just like Zane is. And they all have their own little unique backstories that just get fleshed out. Oh, I love this kind of stuff. I'm going to skip a couple of pages so it doesn't give something away. And look at some of these Jedi Knights here. There's the Last Resort ship. This is the ship that they're in. Hey, there's LB right there. And the Orphan Maker, because there's other characters with ships, of course. And I think that's enough, because other stuff will be spoilers. Here are the covers without word bubbles. So there are covers here that have these pop word bubbles. A variant cover to issue number one of The Old Republic. Some original artwork. The only thing, and I mean the only thing that I wish they had done for the beginning is take this right here. This comes from the issue number 36, and it's how to pronounce the names. Because there's a lot of names here that, you know, when you're talking about Jedis, they have unique names. So the, these right here tell you how to pronounce them. Because I was so saying Lucian's name wrong, I was calling him Lucian. So it's Lucian. And then just afterwards by the artist, the writers, it's the farewell, and then the bookend pages. Speaking of pages, the paper quality. So this is printed at the iMac printer because I mean, we're, uh, this is I'm sure you could probably see uh, one of the things about this particular omnibus, and it doesn't happen often, but it did happen, and I just want to point it out is that sometimes I got to make sure I have a page with no spoilers. Uh, you can see some of the artwork and some of the lettering on the other page. And keep in mind, again, the way that I have my setup is two big, LED, big LED lights are pointing at this book. So it's, um, it's like, it would be like reading it under the sunlight. So, yeah, I'm probably worse, but you can kind of tell without lifting the page that there are panels back there. And it happens. Uh, the paper quality is thin. It's not what I like to say the Kurt Busiek Conan Omnibus thin from Marvel, but it's thinner than what we're used to from the Donley printer. And... Uh, let me just give you some examples again. Something like this. Like, this is the perfect cover. Um, you can see the letter pages, or I'm sorry, the letter bubbles from the opposite page. Now, this happens. I know it doesn't bother some people, but it bothers, you know, a few. So, I did want to bring that to the attention of the viewers. Now, the binding. So, we're looking at 1,344 pages. It is sewn binding. Not that big of an eye, but big enough. Let's look at some of these spread pages. Can't really show the one that I want to show in the very first issue, but here is an example of one from issue number three. And honestly, it's got that gutter curve that we've seen. It's just a thing from recent Omnis. Then one spread page from the middle of the book right here. And let's look at one from the back. All right, I couldn't find any splash pages without spoilers, so decided to just showcase what the gutter curve looks like towards the back of the book. So this is during the War miniseries. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books, 
products with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this particular omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking it up, if you already own the Epic Collections or the paperback omnibus editions that Dark Horse released a few years ago, or even the single issues, or if you're going to upgrade. I would love to know all those answers, and if you have any more questions. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon, and both are amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. More importantly, everyone, please stay healthy, stay safe, and may the Force be with you.